Live from New York, it's The Cube, covering Big Data NYC 2015. Brought to you by Hortonworks, IBM, EMC, and Pivotal. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in New York City for Strata Hadoop. Big Data NYC is the event, and this is theCUBE, live for three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage, day three, kind of, all the action's kind of coming together. We're here in theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. Our next guest is Joel Horowitz, the VP of Marketing Analytics at IBM, and Ryan Peterson, uh, Big Data Ryan, Chief Solutions Strategist at EMC, and we have exclusive content here. You know, theCUBE is, we're breaking news, we're, we're putting it out there, not necessarily hard news, but this is actually significant uh, industry-related um, formation. So guys, um, let's talk about the IBM EMC relationship. You know, this is a market where customers, guys, figure things out, just make it all work. Mm -hmm. That's the, yeah. word, the word we're hearing from customers. We want solutions. We know there's a cobbling together of multiple technologies into one cohesive fabric. Yep. IBM, EMC, guys, all work it out. Be friends, be competitors. <laughs> Whatever you do, you got to work it out. So guys, what's the news? I'll take a quick stab at it. Yeah, we, go for we, it. Uh, you know, I mean, this this is concept of competition, right? So we're, we obviously have uh, business units that compete, and we have business units that work together. Uh, but customers are looking for a, an open uh, infrastructure. They want to be able to choose what they want to choose. And in organizations as big as we've gotten, uh, we really can't be 100% uh, you know competitive. We have to figure out where we work together. And, and customers are reaching out and saying, "Hey, uh, uh, love this product." I, I got to say, I mean, the the stuff that IBM has been doing at the the analytics level and the the, the tool sets they've been creating really incredible and, and uh, customers are picking up on that and we said we really need to make sure uh, our joint customers can work well together and so I'm really excited about this. Joel, IBM obviously doing great stuff. I mean, from a company standpoint, we've been following you guys now for me on the messaging side for multiple years, executing the vision and you guys are winning, doing great. Might not get the press headlines with all sure. the IBM news, always oh, stock buybacks, all this happening, but you guys are executing well. Obviously, Blue Mix is doing well. Could get go better and go faster. And you guys are working on that. Big data. You guys got the Watson announcement. You guys are investing and moving fast. What does this deal mean for you guys and IBM? Yeah, I mean, you know, we see our main value add. We go deep on analytics, right? And so I, I see this as just an extension of that. Um, I think one of the things to comment on on the um, on what we're doing together is the fact that our clients are asking for choice. Our clients are asking for less complexity. Our clients are asking for an open you know community to work with, and I think that's what you know EMC, IBM, Hortonworks, Pivotal, all of us are trying to accomplish with this ODPI mm -hmm. is is truly making taking the friction out of the system. You know, it's a systemic problem right now that we have with Hadoop, where a lot of people are making money on creating friction, frankly. And and so my point of view is frankly that we need to re remove that so the entire market can grow because otherwise I, th I see it stagnating. And so I think this, you know, this, these types of things that we're doing together, these types of partnerships, I think are, are really exciting. Can you name names on who's creating friction, who's monetizing <laughs> friction? <laughs> There's a lot, you know, how much Besides time we got. Business, <laughs> you know? That's what we do in the media. We create friction and then kind of clean it up after. <laughs> and make money on both sides, friction and love. love it. Uh, yeah. But this is a love deal, but I want to bring on that point because this is something that's important. Mm -hmm. Open sources tend to be a jockeying game, arm wrestling, whatever you want to call it. Hey, you start a project, I'll start this project. Glass is half full, the glass is half empty. It's always been this way. But the ball moves down the field, the evolution yep. happens. Yeah. But right now, the customer demand for solutions is pretty clear, the straight and narrow there in some level. Yep. The technology stacks are not moving along fast enough from any one vendor, so mm -hmm. now it's the collection of the parts, of the pieces. Right, mm -hmm. well that's where the value is, if I may interject. I, I would say that you know, the value is how you couple these pieces together, and IBM knows this. I mean, mm -hmm. ever since we made our, you know, um, decision to you know support the Linux uh, Technology Center. Mm -hmm. We got the open source software on a bunch of things. I mean, we kind of been you know working in this business model for quite some time, and so this is just an example of that. Yeah, I think uh, to, to put that point, well, an exact customer is a uh, telecommunications example. Uh, we, we've been storing all of their CDR content on uh, on Isilon for, for actually many years now, and they said, you know, we just want to start analyzing this content. So they they uh, looked at IBM and brought them in plugged in the software, connected it right to Isilon, and it started working All right, so let's no get problem. specific. What Love is it. going on? It's Isilon? What's the relationship with, between you guys in the big data space, specifically between EMC and IBM? Be specific. So, so we used ODPI, which is a great great way to get started. Uh, so, so the benefit, and I, I haven't had a chance to really talk about the benefits of ODPI for us, 
But you know, we uh, we have to validate the RPCs that all work with HDFS, and and so we do that with with Hortonworks and Pivotal today uh, through ODPI. Well, when when the customers ODPI, that's the the, the open the open data platform initiative. Or I'm yeah. not sure the exactly new letter. What those yeah, initials small are. I, is it a big I, little I? It's little like, I. There's, there's some there's some rebranding going on right <laughs> yeah. now. So we'll we had a panel last night. So yeah, so we, the people are familiar with that. So this is a part of the ODPI it, evolution. It, it made it possible. Right? It, it simplified the ability for us. To say, you know what? Well, this isn't a heavy lift uh, between either one of us because they had already gone to to shifting their, their direction to ODPI versions. Uh, we had already standardized uh, our HDFS implementation to ODPI. So okay, well there you go. Then the, the two work without any friction. So this, this is a great benefit. This is basically a use case of the promise of ODPI in the it sense is, yeah. when we were talking about it at the last event, yeah. you know, I was not, I mean, I was not critical of it. Dave and I certainly, you know, analyzed and said, hey, this could be a you know one big, you know, um, vendor love mm. fest and nothing happens, or <laughs> we'll see what the what the proof is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this is evidence it's of a working proof, relationship. Yeah, it, it actually did uh, did end up being a, a good thing, at least for us to be able to. Alright, so I'm a customer now. I'm gonna put my customer out, pretend I'm a customer. Yep. And I'm a big, large enterprise. Okay, guys, great. You're holding hands at the altar. Mm -hmm. ODPI helped facilitate that. That's phenomenal. All I care about is I want the solution. I want SLAs. Yep. Yeah. That's what they want. They want yeah. to have delivery. They want you guys to do your jobs. You know, align up and, and execute your your. So, so I'll take that exact customer. The, the first customer has actually done this. We have actually a, a customer who's in, in in production now with us, and they they just took uh, because it was ODPI. It was tested. It's validated. Uh, IBM brought their software in, they plugged it in, and uh, a couple days later after just you know, getting through all of the little uh, setup procedures, it worked, and it worked great. And the customer's very happy with it, and they said, well, hey, this, this was uh, surprisingly easy, we just so, keep doing this. So I got to give you some, we had Merv Adrian from Gardner, you saw him earlier, mm -hmm. and I want to share with uh, Joel and, and, and you get your perspective on some of the comments, some of the things uh, Joel just mentioned. Um, the people that are at this event, Big Data NYC and Strata Hadoop, um, some of them are funded just for one purpose, to deploy Hadoop and make it easier. Mm -hmm. So deploying and managing Hadoop easier. That's yeah. their whole focus. Right. That's, a, that's, a, that's a one trick pony, right? Yeah. He also made a comment that every year, the complexity in Hadoop is getting more complex. Yeah. It's getting harder, so it's more complexity every year. Yeah. To your point. Yeah. Um, and then he said, secondly, the data is separating out two data sets of research. Big Data and Hadoop, two different surveys. Hmm. Big Data survey, 76% of companies are investing and or are planning immediately to invest in Big Data. Hmm. That's a huge shift last year, wow. 42% yeah. in Hadoop. Mm -hmm. Right, so where's the other 30 something percent? Yeah. Um, and they've added Spark in there, which came out really kind of low, actually. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, you know, so on the, mm -hmm. on, and there was another uh, term in there, Spark. But yeah, yeah. Kind of lower on the, on the but well, this I is full on enterprises now. Yeah, and I think that's the whole, you know, this idea of big data. So, you know, what is big data? And clearly from that survey, or those two surveys to combine, it's not just to do. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of our clients already have big data, and they've made huge investments, whether it's on mainframe, mm -hmm. whether it's on, you know, Isilon, whether it's on, you know, power systems, like any of these mm -hmm. systems, they've invested in over the last, you know, few years, and they want to see a return on that investment. Yeah. And the beauty is, is that, you know, whether, I think for whatever reason, big data got coupled with Hadoop, and that's not really what we see. We mm -hmm. see actually Hadoop as, you know, opening up that data more, right? Mm -hmm. We see, you know, these types of relationships, you know, giving the power back to you know, the IT team to yeah. do more with their data, because otherwise it just sits there locked in this confined data mm -hmm. warehouse in a very you know, rigid structure. And I think you know, things like Hadoop and NoSQL databases yeah. are kind of creating this malleable you mm -hmm. know, uh, space for people to work in. Well, I think it's great. I mean, you guys have your own storage group. We go IBM Edge, we've covered that event many times. So it's yeah. not, not like you don't have storage. So it's not like you're doing yeah. an OEM deal with EMC. This is a partner well, deal as part of ODPI with Isilon, which by right. the way is kicking some butt in a lot of these big named hyperscale accounts, mm -hmm. and it's a great use case, so you know, customer choice, this is a customer choice thing for mm -hmm. IBM, right? This yeah. is where you guys say, hey, you know, you want to work with Isilon, no problem. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and I think it's interesting because um, you know I think there's a there's a misconception that Hadoop is like this greenfield opportunity. It's like this white space. It's not, right? Mm -hmm. People are like, oh, we're going to offload all our data off a of mainframe or off our systems into a data lake, and it's like that's ridiculous, right? Mm -hmm. No, what's actually going on, and the people who are getting the most value out of Hadoop are the people who are actually pulling Hadoop into their current systems right. and integrating deeply into what they've already invested in. Right, yeah. and I think that's where we're seeing the value. Ryan, he was just basically, I'm not, I want to say underhandingly <laughs> slamming data laking, but data lake really speaks to the data warehouse side of the business. Right. And well, you got flow, you know, you got, uh, as Mervane said, data in motion, yeah. which is 
you know, may not even hit a database or a lake. It's like, it's the ocean. Right. Yeah, I, well, I'd say this is, uh, I think the, the data lake is something that we've been building for many years. I think the fact that it's been termed that now is something that's uh, getting more interesting. And, and to some extent... You know I don't like the term, but that's... You know, <laughs> it, 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 you know it's, I'm well what, talking. All the cube people know I don't like data. <laughs> it's like Data cloud. ocean. In Wikibon, like cloud, right? next to John Furrier's name, <laughs> is I do not like data lake. I like... No, actually, there's some images out there. Data ocean has currents. It's dynamic. That's real time. <laughs> yeah, know, I think we should yeah, have data yeah, oceans. Tsunamis coming in. Data torrents. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Data... Data, uh, data pools. Uh, data tributaries. Exactly. Everything's water. Yeah. <laughs> A river. A river, exactly. Uh, uh, yeah. no, I think uh, you know we've we've been building architectures of scale out architecture. I think yeah. scale out to some extent can can equate to a data lake. Mm -hmm. uh, with the same time, we we need to make it so you can analyze content within that that uh, store. And so, you know, from our perspective, it's really easy. You take yeah. take a big insights, for example, and you you point it at the the network share, HDFS network share, and mm -hmm. you get this uh, par parallel connectivity, and it just works. Yeah. So I, I bring that up only because I want to highlight the comment and kind of tell you on data lake. Yeah. Yeah. It's not one thing. There's a lot of different yeah. use cases architecturally for the use of storing data, of which Merv said on his bumper sticker, my last question, what's the bumper sticker of the show? He mm. said, store simplicity is the key thing that he's seeing as the number one thing, storage, and simplicity right. for executing right. for solutions, right? Yeah. So storage, again, back at the center of the value proposition, hence yeah. Isilon, hence IBM. The interesting thing he said on top of that was, when I asked him what are the top technologies for big data that you're seeing, mm. big data categorically, mm. which was the most, you know, 70%, he said, the past three years consecutive, mm -hmm. for one, two, three, top three for the past three years were Enterprise Data Warehouse, Cloud, and Hadoop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Spark, rising up. Yeah. Still in single digits, but moving up the, yeah. the leaderboard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Spark is a means to an end. So you talk about you know, ease of use or, or simplicity in, in his words. Um, and Spark is cl clearly helping with that. I mm -hmm. think where we've stagnated a bit is, you know, MapReduce is a pretty clunky programming framework to work in. So mm -hmm. I think Spark is actually pulling, you know, a lot of this industry along because yeah. it's making it a lot easier to build solutions. Yes. And coming back to the ODPI, I mean, that's what it's all about. It's about cr making it easier for people to get value yeah. out of this technology. It's not like, when I first came to uh, Strata Hadoop World, like back in 2011, you know, it was people up there talking about data products, DJ Patel for one, coming on stage mm -hmm. saying, we built people you may know at LinkedIn and this is how we did it. Nowadays, it's like, hey, you know, you know we're doing this with Hadoop and it's like, it's a technology kind of trade show. Mm -hmm. And it, it kind of bums me out because it used to be far more about the solutions people are building yeah. than necessarily the, the well, technology. Well, hence your friction comment, which yeah. you can, if you name names, that'd be great for ratings, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you right now, I've seen firsthand a lot of the mudslinging because it's a land grab. So the other comment is, uh, you know, to his point about cloud. So we'll be at Amazon reInvent next week with theCUBE mm -hmm. and we're going to see the, the Amazon messaging. Certainly we've seen it at VMware with their mm -hmm. cloud. Azure yeah. going to do their events, so IBM has their cloud. Mm -hmm. Cloud has muscle. Yeah. Cloud actually understands uh, the delivery, the, the, the operational scale that customers expect. Yeah. And Merv said something, he said, no one really talking about big data in the cloud until this year, yet 50% right. of the deployments of big data is already in the cloud. Interesting. So what he's, so that means the cool kids, mm -hmm. us, well, or you guys, <laughs> um, Definitely. are not talking about cloud when the customers are actually doing it. Yeah. If you believe his data, that means the cloud players are going to have a huge muscle yeah. in taking over this whole ecosystem. But they're not mutually exclusive, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, we see, I don't know about you, but we see both, right? So we see hybrid cloud solutions. Exactly. So I think yeah. the trick here is not saying, well, is it all cloud or is it all on-premise? It's saying, actually, there's only a few groups so that can do both. So which hybrid cloud vendors are, are what, here at this show? Well, frankly, You're looking at one yeah, of them. Yeah, of course, that's why. <laughs> both of us actually are. Microsoft uh, had a lower <laughs> third sponsorship on all the keynotes. Microsoft, yeah. IBM, yeah. EMC. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen HP here. No. Okay, great. What does that mean? What about, what's going to happen to this ecosystem? Well, I rest my case from <laughs> Tuesday. Well, the whales are in town. No, this is a customer driven. Is customer driven. You, you and I have talked about this concept of data gravity, right? The, yeah. the idea that data ultimately will will store and stay wherever it was ultimately created, because it gets too big to a point where it really can't be transferred between yeah. architectures. So I think part of the challenge is: Are you talking about data that's actually being transacted in the cloud, and then you're ultimately running big data against it? In which case, that's a data gravity challenge. Or is this actually transferring information from a local facility into the cloud? Because maybe it was an easier operational model, the marketing team didn't want to have to deal with local IT, so they go set it up in the yeah. cloud. And the, I think that a lot of that percentage of, of those, those opportunities that are happening in cloud 
are that ladder. Uh, they're, they're just real quick, easy, simple tests. And mm -hmm. when they go to full scale, the question is, where will that be? Will that be in cloud? Or will a data gravity problem ultimately bring them back internally? Well, this is to, that's a great point. Because the POC's low hanging fruit, we heard on theCUBE, average deal size is there for vendors between 30,000 and 60,000. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when you get into full deployment, it's larger, obviously six figures, mm -hmm. seven figure kind of opportunities. But you bring up the great point. Yeah, I can knock down a POC here and there. Correct. To your point about complexity. Okay, now I got to make it work. Mm -hmm. right? Now the issue becomes, how does the customer consume the products and technologies to ultimately actually put the solution in motion. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, put it in practice, operationalize it. Right. That to me is the number one problem that I see is that, well, okay, hey, all right, I don't care guys, figure it out. Yeah. But operationalizing the solution right. is the execution of the products. Yeah, and that's How hard. I mean, it is still hard. Yeah. I mean, and we're trying Cloud to make it easier. Makes it easier. So, yeah. we, so we launched uh, actually this morning with, with this uh, um, discussion is something we call the Hadoop Starter Kit for IBM and Iceland. And the intent is, to, it's a multi-page document that walks the customer through how exactly to set up uh, Big Insights to work with Iceland to make it, we want to really operationalize yeah. and simplify the, yeah. the deployment. I think that next step is, can we simplify the architecture of adding application capabilities and functionality, making it so yeah. customers can really get it to be, to be simple. At the same time, we need to take, we need to take uh, processes out of the steps of setting things up and make it easier to get these up. Joel, I, I want to get your thoughts on something. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, you want to say something? Well, I was going to say, I mean, one of the things that we see too, especially with Big Insights, is the fact that it has Big SQL. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting in the, in the conference or in the exhibition hall the other day, and uh, overhearing uh, a conversation and someone's like, does this support ANSI to one of our other uh, competitors? And it was that's like, does this support customer. ANSI? And the answer was like, I don't know. And it's like, yeah, that's that's an important thing because yeah. you know if you're already running a ton of you know workflows, right? Mm -hmm. or, well, or that's should, table just, stakes for the enterprise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you can't support ANSI, you're don't even if you're a startup. You're like, what's ANSI? <laughs> you're dead. Yeah. You know, it's like, I'm like what? Yeah. You'll never so get an enterprise yeah. customer. It's just kind of like it. It just kind of goes to that kind of ease of use yeah. thing and the fact that you know we really do need to kind of focus on the actual client, as opposed to just trying to do things for the sake of doing things. So I want to get your thoughts. Yesterday I interviewed um, Aidan O'Brien from EMC, he's the GM mm. of the Big Data Group, and Bill Schmarzo, mm -hmm. the mm. Dean of Big Data, author, professor, at uh, San Francisco State. I said, um, how are you guys working on it so hard to integrate all this stuff together, to the point mm. of customers want integrated solutions, they want it to work, they want it supported, right. and they said, Big Data is a team sport. Yeah. So I want you to get Absolutely your comments. Is. How do you view that statement in, at, with the ODPI successfully showing some fruit on the tree? Right. What's your view on teamwork and what should people look at for being a good team player? Yeah, I mean, I would say it's a data science, really, is the practice, in my opinion. I don't think big data is, like I said, it, that's mm -hmm. just basically been around forever, right? I mean, data warehouse is big data. Um, but I would say data science is absolutely a team sport. And I think that's where this whole idea of like, you know, oh, there's an individual data scientist who's going to be able to do all these things. That's just not factually true, right? It's just not. So you do need a team, um, and I think the best way uh, that teams work together is when they can work in one environment, mm -hmm. right? If they're having to, you know, develop um, some code over here on one system in one environment, mm -hmm. and then having to like transfer that code into a different environment to go production or whatever, that just adds these this friction, as I mentioned earlier, to the system. So again, that's why things even like Spark help because they have actually a very deeply integrated framework. So if you're doing SQL, it's there. If you're doing machine learning, it's there. If you're doing you know, streams, it's there. If you're doing graph analysis, it's there. You know, and it's all in one place. So yeah. people from multiple backgrounds, whether you're a data science person, whether you're a DBA person who's working with SQL, whether you're an application developer working on Scala, mm -hmm. all of these people are now in the same place. And we've demonstrated that. Internally, we ran this hackathon, as, I, as we talked about uh, last month. And we had hundreds of solutions come out mm -hmm. from our development team mm -hmm. because they were able to just sit down from various backgrounds and on the cloud in Bluemix, mm -hmm. able to actually develop these things extremely fast. And so to me, that's, that's what we want to bring to the enterprise, mm -hmm. right? We yeah. want to bring that in and make all of that available to them so they have this like sandbox to work in and, and do cool it, stuff. It's interesting, even at the infrastructure layer is a bit of a team sport, especially in the larger enterprises where you have a storage team and you have a compute team and you have an applications team and you have all these different guys. You've got to get those people to all sit down and say, hey, you went, we want to deploy Hadoop or we want to deploy Spark or we want to deploy this technology to reach this conclusion or this solution and how do we do that together? Yeah. And, and that's actually very hard. You get a lot of comp competition between yeah. those two I mean, groups. sometimes there's some infighting amongst the team. You've seen yeah. that certainly <laughs> in the baseball with uh, Papelbaum and uh, uh, Bryce yeah. Harper. Um, but in the dugout, there's some friction. Yeah. In yeah. baseball, we saw that. So it's, it happens on these industries where there's some infighting. Well, there's a culture mm -hmm. shock going on, mm -hmm. right? It's the IT crowd who have been taught 
you know, by IBM <laughs> and, and EMC, <laughs> exactly. right? For a long time to protect data, lock yeah, it down. Yeah. It's a liability, mm -hmm. right? Don't let people touch that yeah. stuff. Data right? orders, we talked about that. Yeah, yeah, and then you have people now that are saying, no, no, open it up. There's value there. There's, you know, you got to get in, get, you know, get deep with your data and do something with it. And so that to me is like the actual kind of That actually boundary. came up on the panel yesterday, last night on our panel about how to balance the sandboxing of sharing economy of data right. with the compliance and security of protection for the right reasons, right. not for you know, Machiavelli right, exactly. reasons. Well, there's certainly lots of things we have to deal with around governance, around PII, uh, but when it comes to things like data monetization and understanding the value, I think that's still such a, a big subject. I know there's people doing research on exactly how to do that. Uh, there's there's got to be some magical right. algorithm. So I want to get you guys, since you brought it up, um, sure. the data hoarders and that kind of culture of locking down the data. <laughs> data um, hoarders. It's a, it could be a reality show on the cube. <laughs> yeah, coming, you know, or data hoarders, Somebody you know. <laughs> yeah, open up. Yeah. Well, I've seen some file systems that look terrible. It's a show that open up in the, the storage wars. I mean, we can actually do, do you know, open up the storage and do a storage wars. I love it. Um, so <laughs> where, are, where are we in the culture? Just kind of give a, uh, some color to, you know, people are getting it, 50%, 100% sharing. How would you, on the spectrum of the locking it in, IT mindset that you were referring to, where are we in the spectrum? I mean, from my standpoint, I see, again, I think this is one of the big values of Big Insights, is the fact that with our big sequel, not to push it too much, um, you know, we do have kind of row level, table level governance, right? So, you know, when you're working with, you know, personal identifiable information, especially in the healthcare space, mm -hmm. where we're working with a lot of clients, or you're working here in New York City with financial, you know, instruments, mm -hmm. um, that matters. And so I think that's not changing. Those requirements, those SLAs for security and for governance aren't changing. And so we take that very seriously as we have mm -hmm. for many years. And I think that's also one of the things that Big Insights is bringing to the table is we're one of the few kind of vertically integrated distributions mm -hmm. um, that brings that to, to the enterprise. I think uh, from our perspective, we're taking, there's a lot of data that we've already got stored. We're figuring out how to enable that to run analytics against that data set and trying to determine exactly uh, uh, how we get value from data that's already been stored and to some extent archived. So a lot of, you'll see a lot, uh, even further down the road, more and more EMC products uh, continuously, you see uh, HDFS interfaces attached to those products even though they've been around for quite some time. Brian, Joel, thanks so much for sharing this exclusive news. You guys, I mean, it's course. really historic. I mean, EMC, IBM working together, this is a real testament to the partnering team sport mentality that you it's guys- It's the ODPI, man. It's, yeah, it's, it's real, it's happening, it's great. Okay. Very powerful. And the benefit to customers real quick is just stability, yeah. Um, Ease of use, it's yeah. getting going, it, you know, they've made the investment, they can now use big insights there and get a lot of value out of their data. So this is a rising tide floats all boats kind of mentality, right? For sure. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. All right, IBM and EMC working together, breaking, bringing it to you here from theCUBE, exclusive. We're uncovering all the signal from the noise out there, and of course it's theCUBE, live in New York City for Big Data NYC, as part of Strata Hadoop. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>